God give me to drink Give me to drink, give me to drink, give me to drink, give me to drink. My family is thirsty, God. Give me to drink. The nations need water. Make me a well. Make me a well. Make me that well. And give me to drink. Hallelujah. When she said, give me to drink, she said, Lord, I'm willing to be that well that will carry the water to the city. I will carry the water to the city. The water was at the well, but she became the well that the city needed. Is there anybody that can say, Lord, make me that well that will go to the city and give thirsty men to drink? Hello and welcome to Community Worship Center, where the word of God is the broken bread and the naked truth. Join us for our service already in progress. Amen. Glory to God. It is the word time and we're going to turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter number four. Ephesians chapter four. Amen. Ephesians chapter four. We're going to read from verse uh 27 amen and we're going to read read from verse 27 down amen for those who take notes it is a good time for you to do so hallelujah glory to god need to give place to the devil amen that's 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 powerful right there neither give place to the devil let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. Verse 29 of Ephesians chapter 4. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be he kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiven one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. My God, we look to you today. The word that we need to transform our lives only can come from you. We ask the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, to come and teach us the truth of the word of God. Let nothing be missing. Let nothing be lacking. You know the needs of your people today as we gather. So we ask that the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead. May give us a ears to hear and a heart to perceive and to understand the mystery of the word of God. Give us revelation, we pray. Let nothing of the adversary that is a sign in this atmosphere to steal the word that will transform our lives from us. Oh God, prevail. But we ask you, Lord, that the word of God that is alive, that is sharper than any two-headed sword, my God, be released unto us today. In Jesus' mighty name, may the church clap your hands before the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, give me a word. Lord, give me a word. Amen. I don't know if I'll be hooping. I don't know if I'll, I'll go at a slow pace. I don't know what's going to happen today, but I know that the Lord has something in store for us as his people. I want to minister to you from a topic that says, be kind one to another. Hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor this morning and say to your neighbor, don't be nasty. Come on. You have to tell them. Do you know that nasty people go to church? Uh, when I say nasty, I'm not talking about having their place filthy and their car looking like a pigness. I'm talking about the nasty attitude, the nasty way in which we treat and angle people. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be nasty to me. 
Amen. Look at the next person and say, fix your attitude and show me some kindness. Hallelujah. As I say those things, I, I, I feel like just going at it. But we, we thank God. I oftentimes say that it is a great responsibility to take one word and preach to thousands of people. But it is not right for you to go to church and don't leave with something that would minister to your heart. No man has the ability to give you a word. The word come from the Holy Spirit. So I want to challenge you today that you would pray as the word is going forth. And say, give me a word, Lord. Amen? So as I look at the text, Paul here was writing his letter to the believers, the church of Ephesus. And I also want to say the entire body of Christ. I must propose to you that Paul's letter to the Ephesian church and the entire body of Christ. I want you to look at, lay your hands on yourself and say he was talking to me. Was one that I believe was absolutely necessary and needed for the body of Christ. If you look closely at the text, you would realize that Paul's letter, uh, or Paul's desire, he want the believers to understand, if you look at it, and the context, and, 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 the, and how it was written, he wants us to understand that the way that we treat and handle each other is important to God. So Paul's letter was designed to help the believers to put their differences aside. Because when you look at the text, you can see that something was going on. And Paul wanted them to conduct themselves as godly people. So Paul spoke to them about keeping the unity of the spirit. And oftentimes when we talk about unity, we believe that it was, it was we who caused it. The unity, we created it. We put it in place. But the unity was already done by the Spirit of God. And our responsibility as the church is to maintain it. Somebody say amen. So Paul, he spoke to them about bearing each other's burden. Hallelujah. He spoke to them about the people who were stealing from each other. He said, don't go around and steal. But I want you to go and get you a job. And so that you'll be able to assist and to help those who are in need. Paul, he told them that uh, not to give place to the devil. Amen. He said, don't give place to the adversary. Because if you give place to the devil, when he comes into our lives, he's going to destroy our walk with God. Don't give place to the devil. So if you look closely at the text, it is clear that Paul want the believers to understand that oh you treat your brother or you treat your sister it is something that is important to god hallelujah it is something that uh is dear to the heart of god it make no sense we come to church and we sing and we dance and we speak in tongues and we run around the church all right, then we don't have that in CWC. We don't have people in CWC that speak in tongues and run around the church and dance. Amen. But it makes no sense you come to church and sit down and looking all cute. Amen. Glory to God and looking all nice. Glory. Hallelujah. But yet your attitude is nasty towards each other. So Paul was addressing this matter and said it matters to God how you treat each other. Paul in the text, if you look from verse 1, he, he urged the believers to live a life worthy of the calling of God that they have received by completely humble and gentle. He want them to understand that you must be patient one with another and bearing up each other in love and making every effort. He said, do everything that you can do do to keep the unity is there anybody in the house that find yourself in a place where you have to push beyond your feeling to keep 
the unity of the church so that the thing that we set out to do will be accomplished hallelujah glory be to god ha ah, jesus i give you praise do you know that in order for the things of god to come to fruition we have to learn how to crucify self and flesh and get over our own feelings so that we can carry out kingdom things in the earth because the natural man want to cross out people the natural man want to fight the natural man want to say oh in the world you can have done this to me i will do something back to you but because of the spirit of god that is at work in our lives we can say flesh you're not gonna win today do you know there are times you have to talk to flesh <laughs> if, if, if any believer want to have the victory you have to learn how to talk to flesh talk to the carnal man because the carnal man is always talking do i got a witness in the house i mean the flesh always a talk the flesh will tell you punch in the face the flesh will tell you cuss them out the flesh will tell you keep the money in the pocket the flesh will tell you put on something that is not appropriate but you have to talk back to the flesh and say flesh be under subjection you're not gonna win today you're not gonna win today i'm a new creation i'm a brand new man all things have passed away and i'm born again more than a conqueror that's who i am I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man, one more time, I'm a new creation, I am a brand new man, oh things have passed away, and I, you have to talk to the flesh, more than a conqueror, that's who I am, I'm a new creation, I'm a, can we do it one more time, oh I'm a new creation, I'm a brand new man. Oh, all things have passed away, and I'm born again. More than a conqueror, that's who I am. Oh, I'm a new creation. I'm talking to the flesh. I'm telling the flesh, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, all things have passed, and I'm born again. More than a conqueror, that's who I am. I'm a new creation. I, I won't cross your house. Oh, I'm a new creation. I won't fight you. A brand new man. Oh, things have passed away, and I'm born again. More than a conqueror, that's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Look at the person beside you and say, neighbor, just in case you didn't get the memo, I'm saved. Ah. Just in case you didn't get the memo, I'm saved. You know why I don't cuss you out? I'm safe. You know why I'm not going to tell you my mind? You know why you can talk to me like that? Because if I wasn't saved, Hallelujah. You have to know to talk to the flesh. You have to know to, to talk to the flesh. Because the flesh is always talking. The flesh will tell you I need some rum. But you have, but you have to know to talk back to the flesh. Amen. You have to give the word of God back to the flesh. Because the flesh spoke to Jesus and say you are hungry amen and the devil jumped in right there and jesus said man shall not live by bread alone but by the word the flesh will tell you you are weak and you can't do it and you have to tell the flesh i can do all things through christ who strengthened me you have to tell the flesh the lord is with me amen david at one point in his life talked to the flesh and said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadows of death i will fear no 
evil because thou art with me thy rod and thy star you have to talk to the flesh and say don't host will the encamp round about me my heart will not fear you have to talk to the flesh and said i will believe the report of the lord his report say i'm victorious you have to talk to the flesh and said i walk by faith and not by sight amen you have to know how to talk to the flesh so if you look and search the scriptures you would realize that the way in which we treat each other amen is important to god and cwc i strongly believe that god is getting ready to do something powerful in our ministry hence the lord is setting us up with this series about kindness and how to be kind one to another amen because oftentimes truth be told there are people that came in our midst and they did not come back again because when they come they didn't know that because you can't pay your rent they didn't know that because uh you're going through your own struggle at home they didn't know that they have to come and pay to sit beside somebody with a nasty attitude i come to church to hear the word of god and to experience the move of the holy spirit but pastor reed we come and you sit beside somebody and the preacher tell me to touch my neighbor and i touch my neighbor and she give me or he give me or that nasty look i didn't know that i have to come to church and deal with such behavior it is not in cwc i'm not talking to none of you amen glory to god but i'm just saying it happened in the church and oftentimes people don't return again because of the behavior and the treatment that they receive from people who are saved amen oftentimes we don't think that when we come to church there are issues in the church oftentimes we think that everybody is looking how they dress amen dress and look great nobody look pop down nobody uh if you look at the sisters now they here look nicely done they look great amen they spend time and fix up them their selves they therefore nobody is going to be thinking that I'm sitting beside somebody who is going through trauma, who is going through hell, who is fighting all kind of stuff. And I come to church to have a wonderful time, but yet I was mistreated and I was mishandled and I was deal dealt with in a manner in which it was a turn off. But somebody said, not in this house. Amen. So how we treat people is important. And if you look back throughout the scriptures, you would realize, amen. Uh, and I want to let you know also that there are people that we come across and there are people that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, some of them are under punishment. Some of them are under uh, ordeal simply because how we treat people people you are dealing with the consequences of your own behavior uh, nasty treat people bad disrespectful hurtful and harm others life have a way of turning it around back at you uh, it's for another message but the bible said whatsoever you sow it it shall you also reap well you don't believe me that when you're nasty when you're mean when you're unkind when you're not forgiven when you're not merciful you don't believe me that when you don't treat people good when you don't deal with people the right way it have a way of coming back at you hallelujah it have a way of hitting you back it have a way of coming back at you full force full measure look with me in matthew chapter 25 i'm trying to take my time so that amen we can get some stuff and i'm looking at the time at the same time matthew chapter 25 from verse 39 we uh you will see where the bible instruct i want to say give a warning to those who believe it is okay to mishandle to those who think it is all right to mistreat people hear what he said amen glory to god in verse 4 29 39 down to 40 but let's look at verse 40 for the sake of time and, and the king here is unparable shall answer and say unto them verily i say unto you inasmuch as he have done 
it unto one of these amen the least of these my brethren he have done it unto me amen so jesus christ there he was speaking a parable and he said unto them that the least you do unto one of these the least among these people my brethren he said you are doing it unto me and that's why i'm saying we must be careful or we treat people because here the lord is saying if you hurt one of them you are hurting me if you have if you lie and do you know some people tell lies but some people i mean they, don't, they just lie on you they just they just tell lie they, it, it, it it pledges some folks to hurt other people but the lord is saying the least you do unto me don't steal from a believer amen don't 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 short change a believer you must be honest in your activity with each other because when you steal from them the lord is saying you are stealing from me amen when you mistreat a believer when you mishandle a believer the lord is saying you are mishandling and you are mistreating me amen and he said the least you do unto the, the least you do unto them the least among them it doesn't matter what size color nationality background it does not matter if their mother and their father their great grandfather were wicked and bad and bad and wicked that does give you the right to mishandle and to mistreat the individual that you are with right now are dealing with when you are treat when you are dealing with people deal with them honestly when you are dealing with people deal with them kind when you are dealing with people treat them with utmost respect because the lord said when you do it unto them you are dealing with me somebody say hey man oh i'm glad that our attitude will be fixed today and we're going to be kind at the end of this message in luke chapter 17 verse 1 the bible teaches that offense will come amen the bible never tell you that we're going to have a perfect life uh, the bible never tell you that amen i'm going to feel like i want to pick on sister shanae today is that all right amen she have the loudest hallelujah anyway so let's do it amen if bible did not say sister shanae I will not offend you. We, offense will come. Somebody going to do something that is going to uh, that, that is going to mess with you. Somebody going to say something that's going to rub you the wrong way. Somebody in the store you're going to go to a cash register and that person that is doing the transaction with you, they're going to misunderstand, they're going to say something, they're going to misunderstand you. Is there anyone that have ever been misunderstood before? Amen. Someone takes something you have said or you are done out of context and come at you ready to take your head off your body offense will come the bible said but woe unto him that have done it amen glory to god woe unto him that caused brother to stumble woe unto him that caused a sister to stumble woe unto him that caused someone to cry tears and feel pain amen in their heart the bible said it is best for that individual it would have been better for them if they have tied a stone around their neck and cast themselves in the deepest part of the sea in other words it best you have done to yourself than what was coming back at you somebody look at your neighbor and say don't be nasty it will come right back at you hallelujah in Psalms 105, man were worn again. And the Bible said, touch not the lords. And do you know you have some people, Pastor Reed, who walk around and say all manner of evil against pastors, against leaders. Their boot, their, their shoe twist, the pants tight, the this, that, the that, this. When the Bible talk about touch, it's not talking about just a physical touch. But you touch them with your mouth. You touch them in the way you talk about them. Or you treat them. And the Lord said, touch not the Lord's anointing. One of the worst things can happen to any human being. You will think they hobby them. You will think they put a witchcraft. You will think that they light candle with their names in it. It's when you touch the men or the women of God and they start to cry. You don't want to make a man or a woman of God 
praying for you or praying about you and call your name in tears. It is worse than anything can ever happen to you. The Bible said it profits you nothing. When a pastor, your pastor and your leaders are praying, let them go before God and say, God, I thank you for Sister Shanae. She's miserable, but she's hard working. I thank you that you keep the church clean. Oh God, I bless your name for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While he's telling God to work and the fact that she's miserable, he's saying, God, I thank you for her hands. I thank you for her feet. I thank you for her strength. Hallelujah. That prayer is profitable and somebody said deliverance will come at the end. He's a miracle working God. Hallelujah. The Bible said that it's profitable. But when they pray for you in tears, it profits you nothing. Look at the person beside you and say, don't touch leaders. Don't touch them. You know why you don't have to touch them? You can't fix them. And if you can't fix them, don't touch it. There are some problem that is bigger than you. And if you can't fix the car, why are you going to take off the tire? Amen. Glory to God. Don't touch them. The Bible said, touch not the Lord's anointing, nor do my prophet no harm. Don't touch them. And there are many people in the world, forgive me God if I've touched your servants. Amen. There are many people in the world today, they are going through some struggles. The car broken the house disrupted kids giving trouble financially even their health they are going through some hard deals because they touch the lord's anointing somebody said preach amen if you look with me again with moses the bible said they spoke against moses wife you can't tell me that you're a pastor and you go married to that picky picky head gal. Amen. Why in the world you go married to someone that is not a Jew and they talk all manner of evil? Then she not say her foot ashy. She 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 can't afford low. And they talk about her. And the Bible said leprosy came upon Aaron and Miriam yeah, because they touch Moses. They and the people they touch amen Moses and the earth open up and swallow some of them because they touch the servant of God hallelujah leave the company of those who trouble God's people let me give you something a nugget for life if you're in a company and somebody's talking about sister Shanae leave that company alone walk away you need to say I'm not a part of it I'm I'm not indulging in it. This table is not my table. I'm not going to sit at the table of gossip. I'm not going to sit at the table of tail bearing. Hallelujah. You want to kill gossip or you want to kill tail bearing? When they come and talking about somebody, just stretch out your hand and say, give me a right hand. And say, let's pray for her. Let's pray for him. I guarantee you. Hallelujah. If you want to kill the spirit of gossip, you need to say, let's pray quickly let's pray quickly let's pray my god you shut the devil up touch your neighbor and say let's shut the devil up you will shut them up any day try it and you will come back and testify don't call your name and say sister Marvia come talking about sister Shanae and I told her to stretch her hands let's pray and he shut her up no don't call your name but I want to let you know don't join the company of those who tear down each other. Somebody said, take away yourself. As soon as it starts, take away yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Because people have a tendency. Look, you know, all it takes is one person. But I mean, I know I'm to them. I mean, I know what it is. All it takes is one person. Grumblers and complainers leave their company and join the company of those who are loaded with the word of God. Isn't it a blessing when you get around people that they don't even know what you're going through. But because of their faith and their stance in God and their love for God, Pastor Reed, hallelujah, they start to talk about the goodness of God and 
the work? What about you testify about the work that you're doing for Christ? When was the last time somebody come to you and tell you how they witnessed to someone and they gave their life to Jesus? When was the last time somebody can tell you I was walking through the store and I was singing amazing grace? Oh, sweet that sound that saved a wretch like me. And somebody walk up to them and say, Oh, you are a believer. Amen. And you can say, Yes, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I'm blood washed. And I'm brought with a prize. And I can testify about the goodness of God. We need more people who are fired up, who are charged, who are filled with the Holy Ghost and on fire for Jesus. And you can testify and say, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives all fears are gone where is the testimony of the church of Jesus Christ stop touch God people and testify about the goodness of God somebody said take away yourself I will not be caught in the company of those who touch God people you ain't gonna let no judgment fall on me Hallelujah. Touch not the Lord anointing. And then one man of attendance to go look at Abraham's wife. And said, Boy, she look good. What a woman. Nice. Fire start running through his body. Because he see a pretty woman. You see, God is a good God, you know. It's almost one o'clock, two o'clock. God is a good God. God fix up one nice woman and give to the man. And this king of attendance, because he's going through stuff. Look at the man wife and say, she's nice. Amen. And send for her. <laughs> ah, touch not the Lord anointing. Don't do his people nothing. Because he sent for her and God immediately touches us problem in his house there are many people with problem in their house is because they bring the name of the people of God in your house and talking about them and tearing them down make sure when your name of God's people is calling your house it is calling because of the goodness of God don't bring God people name up in your house for evil and not anything good amen make sure when you call their name in their house you are praying for them when was the last time you pray for somebody who you have criticized or tear down or talk about pray for them that God will see them through and God have to judge him let's go in the text we're going to go quickly amen somebody say quickly Amen. So Paul, he was talking to the Ephesian, the church of Ephesus. And Paul wanted the believers to come to that place where they put all their differences aside. May I ask CWC this? Is there anybody in the church that you don't get along with? I don't know of nothing like that. But sometimes there are some secret things that festers in our heart. Amen. That we, we, we know for sure. I, 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 I. I, I don't vibes, Sister Shanae. She rubbed me the wrong way. I don't vibes her because of whatever reason, I don't vibes her. But Paul was, don't run with the wrong impression. I'm just using her. We are right. We're cool. We're Chris. Amen. I'm, the, I'm just using her name. Uh, but you have people, Paul want the believers to put all their differences aside and get along and handle each other's well. Deal with each other as though you are my brother. Can I be real? This time is for real. Sister Shane, you alright? Amen. She said yes. Do you know Sister Shane is one of the miserable sisters I have? She's miserable. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah, she's coming back. I mean, out of all my sisters, she loved to fight. But, I mean, she will fight. Real fight. Fight, 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 fight. And cuss you out if needs be too. Quick. 
I mean, what they call it, zero to whatever, to in seconds, whatever, they, whatever term they use. I mean, should we get hot quick? But don't mess with her family. She will fight for them. Hallelujah. She will fight for them. But it does not matter how miserable she is. You have to know, I, I have to make a decision that I'm going to get along with her. I pick on her every day of her life that I see her. We must get along. There are some people in your life that you have to get along with. You have to make every effort in your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. I know you are miserable. I know you are hard to live with. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about Sister Shanae now. All right. I move away from her. There are some people that I mean they are hard to love. Have you ever been on some jobs and you know that these people, they are wicked. They don't even deserve to be called a human being. But as believers, you have to make it up in your mind that I will not allow you to get under my skin. There are some people that the devil himself seem as though he has raised them up against you but you have to make a decision you will not get under my skin hallelujah you need to say when God was anointing me he oil did not only touch my head it flows from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet I know devil can't pass the oil I would I would to God I got a witness you need to stand in the face of some people in all boldness under the anointing of the Holy Ghost I said devil you can't get under my skin I'm too anointed I'm too oiled up I'm full of oil and you can't get past the oil you won't get under my skin do you know that there are some people they just want to get under your skin but you need to say my skin got oil I got the oil of joy I got the oil of peace I got the oil of dancing if you want to shut the devil up when he come in your face and want to get under your skin just start a dance and said every time I turn around the Lord is blessing me Hallelujah. Can't get under my skin. Mm -mm. Somebody said, mm -mm. Can't get under my skin. Mm -mm. You have to make a conscious decision that you will not get under my skin. Somebody say amen. So Paul wants the believers to get along and he, and he wrote the letters unto them. But I want you to understand that the church of Ephesus, it was a church, amen, the people there, they were Gentiles. They weren't people that were Jewish. They did not know about the custom or how the, Jew, the, the, the Hebrews lived. They were Gentiles. They, they didn't know about Jesus. They didn't know, amen, about the custom. In fact, anything goes. Do you know you got some people that anything goes there? They just live the way that they live but they receive the word of God when the gospel was preached to them and they get saved ah God almighty I feel that right there look at somebody and say I am saved no my God tell them I am saved no some folks like to tell you about what you used to do they like to tell you about where you used to go they used to tell they want to tell you about where they saw you before but I am saved now and I'm saved for real oh I am redeemed brought with a prize Jesus I save my whole life. Tell somebody, if anybody, if anybody, the acts oh, just to I am, I will, I will tell them. Can somebody just testify? Hey, can somebody just sing? I am redeemed. I am, I am, I am, I am. I I'm safe. I'm set free. I'm bought with Glory. a price. Jesus. He has changed. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. 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 If anybody, if anybody, the acts just who I am. Hallelujah! 
eso I was a drinking sinner. I was a cussing sinner. But I am. Redeem, 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 redeem. Blood wash, save, sanctify. Holy Ghost fill, fire baptize. Loving Jesus, I am. Redeem, 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 redeem. Amen. Glory. So they were Gentiles. They were not seeds of Abraham. But they heard the gospel. And they got saved. The gospel which is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes. They heard the gospel and they got saved. What I want you to notice with me. Was that Paul was speaking to believers who were struggling with internal problems. Matters of the heart. Yes. 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 Matters of the heart. Brother Kevin, oftentimes we talk about the people who are doing things external. You have external behaviors. And you have internal stuff. But do you know that we cover the internal issues because nobody can see them? What color is unforgiveness? What color is bitterness? What does it feel like to hug wrath? Is nothing you can touch physically are described with the natural eyes that it shaped like this and it looked like that. But Paul recognized that there was a problem in the church. He recognized that there was bitterness. They were bitter against each other. And they would come to church. I love the Lord and I won't let him down. I love the Lord and I won't let him down. I love the Lord and I won't let him down. He has been so good to me. I love the Lord. And they would sing. The musician, I'm ready. They would sing, amen. They would sing and they would dance about. But yet, there was a root of bitterness. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have that problem in CWC. Because when they go to the store, they would buy the best dress. Because they know that Sister Sancho worn is tight and worn, wash out. Hallelujah. So I'm going to buy the best one so Sister Sancho can feel embarrassed. And if I know that Sister Sancho don't go to that store, there's no way I'm going to go to that store and shop because I don't want us to look like we are wearing the same thing. I have money and she's broke. So we are pop style and each other because we want others to feel belittled. And feel as though they are less than anything. Wrath. Hallelujah. Can you just imagine you go to a church and Christians are fighting? Can I tell you that Paul were not talking to those who were not saved. But Paul was talking to people who received the gospel and said yes to Jesus. Yet there was bitterness and wrath and anger and clamoring. They were bashing each other with words. They were fighting and speaking evil against each other. They were talking about the issues and the things. They were complaining and fighting, yet they were having church. We shall have a grand time up in heaven. When they come, they sing, We shall have a grand time, and the choir would be singing. And at the same time, I know I don't like Sister Sancia. My God, she can't take a shower, she smells. No, 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 no. We're, not, we're, we're, we're not talking about We're not talking about her. We're not talking about her. We're not talking about her. We're just saying they're speaking against each other. Nobody loved the sister enough to go to her and say, Sis, you need a mint. Sis, you need to change your deodorant. Sis, I don't believe that dress works for you. And you speak to them in love and correct them in love. 
to help them to be a better person. But what we do, we talk about each other and tear them down. And anything happen, we don't deal with it as a church. We keep it in our heart until it becomes bitterness. Hallelujah. And when it moves from bitterness, it becomes wrath. Because guess what? Hear me, hear me. All the kids just a little bit. Hear me. We, we, we allow it to become wrath. Because guess what we do now? We go outside and we see that the flat tire, their tire is flat. And instead of we telling them that something is wrong with their tire, we play a blind high. Understanding that that is a dangerous thing for that individual life or for that family. We're going to go into the word. Somebody said the word is going for it. I want you to understand that Paul was talking to the church about internal issues. Everybody know the fornicators in the church. Somebody say amen. Everybody know the adulterers in the church. And everybody know that Pastor Jacob loved NSC. I'm not talking about me. I don't love no drinking. I can't drink. But I'm just saying everybody know the external issues. But there are people in the church that have some internal things that are heating them alive. And Paul was addressing these problems. He was saying bitterness, get rid of it. Wrath, get rid of it. Anger, get rid of it. Clamoring, get rid of it. Evil speaking against each other. Get rid of it. He said we are a church for God's sake. And we are saved. Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. Somebody said get rid of it. I must submit to you my brothers and my sisters. That Paul was not only giving the church of Ephesus. An instruction to get rid of internal matters of the heart. But Paul also instructed them. And said sin you're going to get rid of these things you need to put this one in place hallelujah he said be kind one to another amen somebody say amen can you give me a few minutes to just bring this thing to a close I give you a few more scriptures and then we're going to wrap it up I'm sensitive to the time but it's right there we are now somebody said get rid of it and put on this one the getting rid of is to get rid of it, move it, take it off. Hallelujah. You are old enough now in Christ to forgive. You are old enough now in Christ to let go of bitterness and to be able to look at your brother and your sister in Christ and tell them, I love you for real. Amen. Hallelujah. I do Holy Spirit, help me. Have you ever, have you ever come to church? Have you ever come to church, yes Lord, and seen someone in need of something, whatever it is. There's so many different things going through my mind, but I can't say it. But I'm going to fix it the best way that I can. And you see, Sister Latoya, need a hairdo. And you don't do nothing about it. All you need to say, man, then you want to tell me that she can't do her hair. Things so bad that she can't go do her hair. Sister Latai get it cute. <laughs> no, but as brothers and sisters, Pastor Reed, what I'm trying to say, instead of talking about her, say, God, what can I do to help my sister? There is a thing that whole folks used to do that they give you a Holy Ghost and shake. That they put something in their hand and they come over to you and they shake your hand and they say, God bless you. And you release something so that Sister Latoya can go get her here done so that she can look pretty. Because you never know here the pastor giving himself trouble now. Mr. Two Foot can walk in the church. I said, my God, that girl look nice. And it's just that handshake that you give. Bless her. 
to physically adorn herself because of what is going on on the inside. Somebody say, bless your neighbor. Amen. The writer says, showing kindness and expressing kindness is a sign of a true believer. That is nice, don't it? So if you're mean and bitter and unforgiveness, you need to check your citizenship because sometimes you travel outside of the country or the, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the kingdom that you're a part of and you're trespassing, you're lingering outside of who you are. The sign of a true believer is those who express and show kindness one to another. We're going to get there quickly. You can tell from a person's life if they are a follower of Christ or not based on how they expressed and show kindness one to another. Kindness is a fruit of the spirit and a kingdom character. It is a characteristic of God. When you are kind, you are, you are showing that I am a part of the family of God. I am different no my god it's one thing to say i'm different but it's another thing to really show that i am changed galatians chapter 5 tells you about the fruit of the spirit kindness is what a fruit of the spirit one writer said kindness is a type of behavior that involves being considerate are you a considerate person generous helpful towards others without expecting in anything in return hallelujah i want to hold that one and bring it to the closing i can it can also mean a selfless living caring and compassionate a person that is kind they are selfless they don't only think about themselves they think about others they want others to be taken care of they have a caring heart do you have a caring heart as believer? Hallelujah. Kindness is often motivated by genuine feeling of warmth. Hallelujah. Have you ever come to CWC and someone give you a hug and you can feel that this person really love and care about me? I mean, just go through. That's why I'm going to go there. I don't want nobody to come in this church and give no thank you, thank you hug. We have to fix that, right? Give those little hug that means nothing. When you hug someone, make they feel you that I really miss you for real. Do you know it is not one of the easiest thing to go? Pastor Reed can tell you. If you want to know miserable Pastor Reed is, make sure miss one Sunday. She may end up in the emergency room just to miss church one Sunday. It's not about church, it's about the fellowship. It is about when you come among the people of God and you can embrace them and feel the warm embrace and know that this person loves me for real. Who want to fight on the job? Who want to be fighting in the home? Who want to be dealing with some people that are mean? And then when you come to church, you feel all alone. No! We have to be kind and have that genuine warm feeling that involves putting others' need ahead of you. And that is what the church of Jesus Christ is about. The writer said kindness is showing empathy, compassion, and goodwill through both action and words. Why do you leave the banana to go bad at home when there's somebody in church would like to make a smoothie? And they just need a banana. Hallelujah. Oftentimes we say we care and we are kind, but only in words, but not in our actions. We need to act out kindness one towards the other. How do you know I care about you? Is when I reach out to you, pray with you, check in, check up. You don't have to be the person I tell you all my deeds. 
but I can talk to you and tell you how much I love you and I appreciate. Just check in. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, just check in. If you really want to kill certain things, just constantly check in and, and the bad vibes will leave you because you are killing it with love. You have to kill some things with love. You have to weaken some bad feelings, some bad attitude with kindness. Amen. You have to fight the feelings to be mean and say, I will be kind. I will be considerate. I will be genuine. I will not let this negative feelings overpower me. This is not who I am. I am a kind person. Don't only say I'm kind and don't do it, but somebody say do it if you are it. You can't say you are kind and yet you are not doing kind deeds. The writer said kindness characterized by action, generosity, thoughtfulness, genuine concern for the well-being of others. Amen. Genuinely concerned for the well-being of others without expecting nothing in return. Hallelujah. I'm going to skip through some of these things and let you know, understand that when you are kind, you do kindness without any expectation of anything in return. If you're going to get something, you will be kind. If you're going to get nothing, you still will be kind because you are just a kind-hearted person. Don't let nothing stop you and prevent you and get in your way of being kind one to another. One writer said the Bible said kindness is often referred to as a virtue. Amen. Closely related to when you are kind and show compassion. In other words you show compassion. Whenever you are kind you do what? You show compassion. When you are kind you will know how to extend mercy. Hallelujah. You can't say you are kind and you are merciless you got to be merciful you have to be willing and quick to forgive and tell others that I love you and I care about you amen somebody when you are kind you will know how to walk out love and to walk in love towards people because you just love humanity somebody say amen hear this the funny thing is we are living in a world I'm closing Amen. That people, when you're kind to them, they think that you're trying to get something. Is there a witness for that? All right, no? You don't believe me. You see a young girl, or any woman rather, and something fall on the floor. And you walk up and pick it up and try to give them. Some of them give you some dirty look. It make you feel like it best if I just leave them alone and make whatever happen, happen. You, you're kind to some people and they think you're trying to get with them. You are kind to some people and they are looking now. What do you want in return? Because it is a taboo in our society to be kind to people. It's like you are being kind to somebody because you are trying to get something in return. Because we have moved away from being real human being and has become less than animals. Because even animals are kind to each other. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So when you are kind to someone, they think you are trying. Here's the question. How are you want now? How are you trying to get? What you're looking for? And you're bracing yourself to give something in return because you have just received a kind deed. But look at somebody and say, I want nothing from you. When I'm kind to you, you don't have to give me nothing in return. I have no expectation. I'm not trying to bribe you. I'm not trying to butter you up. I'm not giving you, you know, like, let me not call names. But you know, you have some people that when they're going to beg you something, they start to talk to you weeks in advance, butter you up because they're coming to beg you a favor. Amen. And they, oh, cause, oh, sis, Oh, man of God, you are, God is good to you and the anointing of God, they must scammer and thief. 
So sometimes you can't even blame the person on the other hand to expect that you want something while you are nice to me. Because some people they are only nice because they know they have a project and they want to borrow some money from you. But somebody have to understand say so you ain't gonna scam me with your nice words. I am a kind person and you're not gonna Pray upon my kindness. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Your kindness does not mean you are weak. It means you are strong. Because there are some people don't deserve nothing from you. But you are able to overcome the negative energy or feelings that you may have. And allow the spirit of God to lead you. Somebody say amen. Glory be to God. Can I give you some scriptures? Because next week we're not going over this again. We're going somewhere else with kindness. Amen. I'm just going to give you a few points and you just meditate upon them. Read them. For this month we'll be doing a series on kindness. Amen. So kindness is a work. Work it by love. Kindness. Work it by love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. From verse 4 down to verse 7. Amen. It's a charity, suffer it long, and is kind. Somebody say amen. amen. The reason why some people can't be kind is because they don't have love in their heart. Because if you have love in your heart, then you will be kind to people. Somebody say amen. amen. You will be kind to people. You will be kind to people. You will be kind to humanity. Some people are kinder to, them, to their dogs and animals than they are to humanity. Glory be to God. Kindness is an act of love kindness is an act of love and i must give you this information here you can measure the measure of kindness you express towards others reveals the depth of love you have for humanity do you love humanity the amount of kindness you show towards people you can measure because it reveals your love towards humanity you know you know you have some people who rather see this stuff go bad and throw it in the garbage or spoil than give it to somebody they don't love humanity amen there are some people i remember as a little boy growing up pastor reed that there are people who could have afford stones and sand and gravel and you know what they do they dump up their yard hi that when rain fall no water will gather in their yard but what about the man next door who cannot dump up their yard you know what when the rain come your house is safe but the next person house has become a river because you're thinking only about yourself so if there's a sale in the store for oranges you don't go and buy a dozen for yourself and don't tell your neighbor Pastor Reed, Pastor Jacob of Orange and Sale, come, let's go buy. Can you afford the dozen of it is for this? Inform somebody about the blessing. Don't keep it to yourself. So, if you really want to know how much you love humanity, measure by how kind you are to people. One more thing: love that is demonstrated through act of kindness make it hard for you to ignore. The needs of others. When you are kind and your act of love is revealed through your kindness, you cannot ignore that Pastor Reed of a need. It's hard to ignore others' pain when you're a kind person. It's hard to ignore their struggle. It's hard to ignore the needs of others when you have love in your heart for humanity. 1 John chapter 3 verse 17 and, first, and down to verse 18. 1 John chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. Read it and you will see, talk about the act of love. Little children, let us not love in words or talk, but in deed and in truth. Somebody say, I love you. The next one is, I, I just have a few of them. I'm just going to give you quickly. And, and we're going to do our offering at the end. Amen. Glory be to God. Kindness is not optional. 
you don't have a choice to be kind or not. And that is in Micah chapter 6 verse 8. Micah chapter 6 verse 8. Kindness is not optional. You don't have a choice. You have to be kind if you're a Christian. If you're a born again believer, you must show kindness to people. Micah chapter 6 verse 8. The Bible also talks about we must pursue kindness and, it, and we will have long life. It will be well with us. Do you know people that are kind live long many times? Amen. They, 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 they have good life. People that are kind, they have, because they have love, they don't have bitterness, they don't have unforgiveness, they don't have the issue of heart and sometimes the heart issue is what kills you quick. You ever see some people that is young but yet they look very old because they are carrying too much things in their heart and it's caused them to age. I look younger than my age because I have no problem in my heart. I love everybody. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Pursue kindness. And that is Proverbs 21 verse 21. Pursue kindness. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you want to look young and fresh, Work on the issues of the heart. My God, don't look. Be you don't see a bishop look fresh and nice. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you pursue kindness, when you're kind, you look, you, you age well like fine wine. You come across some people that are mean and miserable. Mighty God, they look 20 and 30 years older than they age. When they tell you they age, you have to back up. The next point is put. Put on love and kindness. You have to put it on. In other words, when you are walking around as believers, people can approach you because they see light. Because you put it on. When you walk, you can see that this person looks different. They have a pleasant demeanor. They look approachable. Christians cannot look unapproachable. As believers, you cannot look mean like a bull. Amen? You know those Mexican bulls that they use in the bullfight? You cannot look like that as believers. You have to look pleasant. Amen? Even if you have to walk around with a permanent smile on your face, looking pleasant, looking good, it is important. Because you never know that person that is going to approach you. You can win them for Christ. Look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 12. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Colossians chapter 3 verse 14. So you can read from verse 12 down to verse 14. And you have those information there. Put on kindness. Put on kindness. Be kind one to another. My God and my Father, I thank you for this word. Lord, we are struggling as believers with internal issues. The fight is real. Paul in his writing said the good that I would not I do not and the evil that I would not he said that is what I find myself doing but he said it is not me it is the internal struggle it is the things of my carnal nature that pop up every now and then trying to fight against the God in me and the will to do good but God, he said, I desire to be good and to do good. He said, who shall deliver me from this fight within? Oh God, deliver us from this fight within. Help us to walk right. Help us to live right. Help us to be everything that you have called us to be. We surrender to you, no God. Help us to deal with the matters of heart. If we have unforgiveness, help us to put it away. If we have evil in our heart and we speak evil against each other, help us to lay aside every sin and weight that so easily beset us and help us to run the race with patience. Oh God!